uh, of course uh, I want it, uh, but again, you asked me whether uh, I would some do something different. No, but what I did not realize that I had no relatives in, in the U.S. who had been alone. You had nobody? No, nobody, practically. Company. Yeah, and uh, what my daughter uh, grew up without relatives over there, this is why she is now yearning so much to, to come to Vienna from... She is missing that. Oh yeah, very, very much, yeah. All her life. You see the other Daniel Schwabians, the most, most of them, they came to America in the early 50s. They came with their parents, with uh, uh, rel rel relatives and so. When we go to meet, uh, every year somewhere else, uh, they oh, I haven't seen you for so long, and a cousin, and, and, and all kinds of things, right? And in, in addition, you know, many of them had been also in the American military. I was too old for that. I was too young for the Germans. I was already too old then for the Austrians, and of course also too old here uh, in, in America. Uh, when we go and on All Saints Day to uh, uh, kind of reunion. yeah to uh, the monument we have in, in New York for the Donau Schwabian uh, death, right? Uh, I, I I saw once our president came across through the graves. Uh, uh, so I asked him, oh, how, where do you come from? Oh, I visited the grave of my parents. They have everything practically there. They fit the most. I have met anyone who doesn't feel as an American who uh, came over in the 50s. I came 10 years later alone. There's no cemetery to visit. There's uh, no cousin or whatever, right? So... Of course, it is lonely, but that was also a, a, a side effect which I didn't consider. It was, uh, he was not active in donor Schwabian organizations. For no, a long I, time. I I built up uh, the just a manufacturing plant. I was production manager for ten years in uh, New York. Uh, started with nobody alone, and after ten years, I had sixty-five employees. I had invested maybe a million and a half on machines, all kinds of machines. I was responsible for all that. And uh, then the last two years we bought a little competition company in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. I was also responsible for the production there. So I had to go down two, three times a year for a week and see what's going on. That's when I realized this was a, and still is to a great extent, a retirement state because of the weather, okay? Uh, Americans want to have always sunshine and play golf and all this kind of cheese. Golf is for me uh, nothing, right? It's a, 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 con a conservation, a conversation piece. You go and hit the rhythm, and blah blah blah. That, that's not for me. I was always go go go. Okay. You're so European. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, not necessarily uh, European. Uh, to a great extent, German. I'm, I'm German. I'm glad I am one. I don't want to be anything else. But after 40 years in America, you still feel yourself like German. Oh, I'm, I'm German. I'm not even a German-American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know the the book, uh, from from Helmut Frisch and sure. all the people who worked with him for that. When my daughter got married, my sister and her husband came over for the occasion and brought me along this book, Verschets. And uh, uh, it's a gift from a cousin in, in, in uh, Vienna. Then I started reading this thing. Before I always said, uh, thought, oh, this area down there, Belgrad, and so this is a backwards area, blah, 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 right? I had, I didn't discuss it with anybody, actually. So this is how I drifted uh, off 
people from my Heimat once, right? And then I read there in this book what actually uh, happened in Versailles, how people had been diligent, that the, the industry and all the entertaining thing, the, the thing for I and all this stuff, and I said, oh gosh, that that was so, so a misconception I had, right? Then I decided uh, the Versailles had uh, a, a meeting every year in Keeming uh, at Fingston. Uh, and I said, okay, I want to, to see these people meet the Versailles. So I flew over and my uncle, my mother's brother, uh, who lived also in, in the in the Karlsruhe area with us. We drove down to Keeming and I talked to uh, people that had been at this time, I think, 400 or so, uh, came from all kinds, uh, from all directions, from Wershets. And then I wrote actually an article uh, which for the Wershets Zeitung with the title, How uh, a little boy became a, a Daniel Schwabian. I was only a boy, not a conscious Daniel Schwabian, right? And I said, I, I met these people, they had been pleasant people, honest, straightforward, and uh, these are people I'm glad to uh, uh, this, uh, descend from, right? And after, after all they went through, uh, Built up a new existence, right? And still had the, the should I say, the humor, humor, and so to to carry on. And ever since I, uh, and I'm a conscious uh, Daniel Schwabian, and also a conscious worshipped uh, citizen, right? Yes. So. Uh, what would you consider, uh, let's say, uh, in common for all Daniel Schwabians? What does differ Germans from Donald Schwabians, even, <coughs> even they are a kind of German? You see, uh, Adam Miller Gutenbrunn, uh, a writer, uh, wrote a trilogy, the trilogy, uh, the, the Große Schwabenzug, the, the great uh, uh, Schwaben, uh, uh, what's the right word? Uh, m not movement, as a better word for it, which I cannot recall now. Uh, then uh, two others, uh, but the, 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 uh, among many other uh, other books. So I read the uh, the Große Schwabenzug, which describes how in the, about 1720 and, and, and later on, uh, the uh, our ancestors. Uh, moved down on the Danube and uh, cultivated the swamp and so on. It was a very tough time, as you know. The first, the death, the second, the the, uh, the, sor what? the sorrows, what? yeah, and the yes, third one, the bread, no? Uh, when I was thinking about that, it was definitely a, a selection, uh, 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 un maybe an unconscious selection in Germany at that time. The uh, conditions hadn't been very good. You you, you had been told uh, uh, you had to ask whether you can marry a certain person. So, and then also the uh, the the uh, religious people had been telling you what to do, what not to do. So the the strong-minded and the ones with the courage to take their destiny in their own hands. They went down there. Okay. So like the same motivation had a lot of people went to America. 